We have seen in the previous video that by using a deadlock avoidance scheme, the system remains to be in a safe state always and will avoid moving to an unsafe state. So those requests will not be granted that will move the system to an unsafe state. So a method used for deadlock avoidance should be capable of determining whether the next state or whether a particular state is a safe state or an unsafe state. We will discuss two methods for deadlock avoidance, one by using banker's algorithm and the other by using a resource allocation graph. So first let's see by using banker's algorithm how to determine whether a particular state is a safe state or an unsafe state and then let's see how to use banker's algorithm for deadlock avoidance. For a deadlock avoidance method to work, the system should have some prior information or additional knowledge such as which all processes will be executed, what will be the resource types used by each of these processes during their execution. Let A, B, C be the resource types required by the processes P0, P1 and P2 during their execution. Then what is the maximum number of instances of each resource type available to the system? Suppose the system is having a maximum of 5 instances of resource type A, 5 instances of B and 5 instances of C. Now the processes should claim in the beginning itself what will be the maximum number of instances of each resource type required by them during their execution. Suppose P0 has claimed that during its execution it will need a maximum of 2 instances of A, 2 instances of B and 4 instances of C. It means during the execution P0 will need a maximum of these. P0 is not going to request more than this but during execution actually P0 may use less than these resources but it is not going to request more. Similarly, the other processes have also claimed what is the maximum number of instances of each resource type used by them during their execution. So in the very beginning, none of the resources are allocated to the processes. So from now on, the maximum future need of each of these processes is equal to the maximum need claimed by them in the beginning. None of the resources are allocated. So from now on, P0 will need a maximum of 2 instances of A, 2 instances of B and 4 instances of C. Similarly for other processes. And since no resources are allocated to the processes, now the available resources, the currently remaining resources, or currently available resources will be equal to the maximum of the resources available to the system. So now we have 5 instances of A, 5 instances of B and 5 instances of C available. So this is the initial state of the system. So let be the state of the system at time t0. Suppose the system started execution, the processes started executing, some requests are made, some allocations are made and by the time t dash, the state of the system got changed. Now many resources are already allocated to the processes. Suppose P0 is now allocated with one instance of A, two instances of B and one instance of C. Similarly other processes are also holding some resources. Since some resources are already allocated to the processor, now the remaining resources or the currently available resources will get reduced. So total 5 instances of A, 4 instances of B and 3 instances of C are allocated. So now the remaining resources or currently available resources will be equal to 
we have only 5 minus 5, 0 instance of A remaining, 5 minus 4, 1 instance of B remaining, 5 minus 3, 2 instance of C remaining. Also, since some resources are already allocated to the processes, from now on, the maximum future need of the processes is also changed. P0 is allocated with one instance of A already. P0 will need only a maximum of two instances total during its execution. So in the future, P0 may request for only one more instance of A. Similarly, P0 is allocated with two instances of B. It is the maximum made. So in the future, P0 will not request for any instance of B. And P0 is allocated with one instance of C. So in the future, P0 will request to the maximum of 4 minus 1, 3 instances of C. Similarly, the future needs of all other processes will also get changed. 2 minus 2, 0, 1 minus 0, 1, 3 minus 1, 2, 3 minus 2, 1, 4 minus 2, 2, and 1 minus 1, 0. So now these are the maximum future need of each of these processes. So at time t dash, this is the state of the system. These are the resources already allocated to the processes. This is the maximum future need of the processes and currently we have only this much resources available. So by using these matrices and vectors, we have represented the state of a system at time t dash. Now, by using Banker's algorithm, we need to determine whether a state, whether this state at time t dash is a safe state or an unsafe state. So what is a safe state? The state of the system at time t dash is a safe state if with these remaining resources, if we are able to complete the execution of all these three processes, P0, P1 and P2 by allocating their maximum future needs. That is, suppose just after time t dash, all these three processes requested for their maximum future need and are wishing to complete their execution. Will the system be able to handle that situation with these resources remaining? Suppose P0 requested for one instance of A and three instances of C. Similarly, P1 requested for one instance of B and two instances of C. Similarly, P2 also requested for its maximum future need. With these resources, can we complete the execution of all these three processes? Here all together we need two instances of A, three instances of B and five instances of C. We have only this much resources available. So at a time we cannot allocate resources to all these three processes and cannot complete them. But we can complete the execution of processes one by one. Here P0 cannot be executed now because P0 need one instance of A. We do not have any instance of A remaining. So now P0 cannot be executed but P1 can be executed because P1 needs one instance of B and two instances of C. We have resources available. So now complete the execution of P1 by allocating 0A, 1B and 2C. So that much resources will get reduced from the available resources now. But once P1 completes its execution, it will release all these resources. The resources which are allocated now and the resources which are previously held by this process. So all together 0, 1, 2, 2, 0, 1, all these resources will be added back to the available resources. So now the currently available resources is 0, 1, 2, minus 0, 1, 2, plus 0, 1, 2. So we, not, we need not consider this, just cancel it. So now the currently remaining resources or available resources is 0, plus 2, 2, 1, plus 0, 1, 2, plus 1, 3. 
so 213 we have more resources available now with this increased number of available resources can we complete the execution of any other process with its maximum need now we cannot execute p2 because p2 needs two instances of b to the maximum we have only one instance of b remaining so consider p0 p0 needs one instance of a 1 less than 2 0 instance of b 0 less than 1 3 instances of c 3 equals 3 yes we can execute p0 now so allocate this much resources to p0 and execute p0 now this much resources will get reduced from the available resources but once p0 completes its execution all these resources will be released and can be added back to the available resources so add back so once p0 complete the execution add back the allocated resources so add 103 and 121 so cancel this now the new remaining resources is equal to 334. We have 3 instances of A, 3 instances of B and 4 instances of C remaining. And with these available resources, can we complete the execution of P2? 1 less than 3, 2 less than 3, 0 less than 4. Yes, we can complete the execution of P2. It means we can complete the execution of all these three processes. So here we assumed a scenario where all the processes requested for their maximum needs and we checked whether we will be able to complete the execution of all these three processes. Actually our current available resources is 0, 1, 2. We have checked and found out that with these available resources we will be able to complete the execution of all these three processes in the sequence P1 p0 then p2 so if we execute the processes in the order p1 p0 then p2 then we will be able to complete the execution of all these three processes so here we found only one sequence there can be multiple sequences if any one such sequence is available by which we can complete the execution of all the processes then we can say this state is a safe state and such sequences are called safe sequences. So a system is said to be in a safe state if with the available resources system will be able to complete the execution of all the processes by satisfying their maximum future needs. Similarly, with the available resources, if we are not able to complete the execution of all the processes by allocating their maximum future needs, then we can say that state is an unsafe state. Suppose here P2 is allocated with 3 instances of B instead of 2, so the maximum future need of B is now 1. And the remaining resources B available is 0. So the now currently available resources become 0 instances of A, 0 instances of B and 2 instances of C. With these available resources, will we be able to complete the execution of all these 3 processes? We shall check processes one by one. Can we execute P0 now? No. The available resources are less. Can we execute P1? No. Can we execute P2? No, we do not have enough resources. So here we cannot execute any of the process. We should be able to execute all these processes in some sequence. Then only we can say the state is a safe state. So here the state is unsafe. And we cannot say that an unsafe state always lead to a deadlock state. Here we are assuming a situation, assuming a worst case situation where all the processes requesting for their current maximum future needs. But actually the processes may not request for their maximum future needs. Usually the processes request for resources less than the maximum they claimed for. Also during execution some of the processes may release the resources previously held by them. 
So even from an unsafe state, some requests and allocation, some sequences of requests and allocation can allow all the processes to complete without causing any deadlock. But some unlucky sequences of requests and allocations can lead to deadlock also. But we cannot know that in advance. So in unsafe state, some sequences of allocations can lead to deadlock. Some sequences of allocations may not lead to deadlock. But in deadlock avoidance scheme, we are not moving to such an unsafe state. Here we avoid moving to such an unsafe state. In order to avoid deadlock, the system always remains to be in a safe state. In a safe state, deadlock will not occur. In, a de in an unsafe state, deadlock may or may not occur. So we avoid moving to an unsafe state.